we're going to use the molar mass, which is the mass in grams of one mole, and we're going to use that to convert from either moles to grams or from grams to moles. On the previous slide, we used the periodic table and the formula to come up with the molar mass. And we can do this separately, or we can just do this by the science of canceling units. So if we are asked to find how many moles there are in a certain mass, for example, of water, we would write down the mass for the given 25.0 grams of H2O, and then just work on the science of canceling units. So we're going to put the unit grams of water down here, and we've got to leave some space because we're going to use the periodic table to come up with that number. So we're going to use the molar mass, which is the mass in grams, and I always call this the big fat one mole. So one mole of water goes here. On the previous slide, we came up with that value. We calculated the molar mass by looking at the periodic table. Since there's two hydrogens, we multiply two times the mass of the hydrogen, and there's one oxygen, so we add one oxygen. And we came up with the molar mass. If we're doing the science of canceling units, you'll see when I go back to the next piece of paper that we already have these units in place. We're just missing the number. So if we get out the periodic table now and multiply 2 times 1.008 plus 16, we're going to get this number down here, 18.0, oops, 18.016. So this number comes from the calculator. And then grams of water cancels grams of water. So in the calculator, we're going to enter 25 and divide that by 18.016. And if we do that, 18 divided by, I mean 25 divided by 18.016, we get this big long number. And we'll think of significant figures again. So we'll round this to two, I mean to three significant figures. And so we'll take 1.39 as our answer. So this would be 1.39 moles of water. And trying to visualize this amount is not going to make any sense whatsoever. Remember, the mole is just a unit. We're going to combine this step later on with the balanced equation step. So we need to be in moles in order to uh, follow a recipe. But anyway, that's an example of doing going from grams to moles. We could do the opposite as well. If we're asked for the mass of so many moles, we're, we can still do the science of canceling units. This number is given to us, so we're going to write down, we could put the zero in front, 195 moles. By the way, mole is abbreviated by just dropping off the E. And we also want to write the formula. We do one of these, we do the science of canceling units. And now moles of water goes down here in the denominator. So we put mole here. And since the problem tells us that to calculate the mass, we're going to put grams of water in the numerator. And one mole is always uh, part of the molar mass unit. The molar mass is always the mass in grams of one mole. So again, we can just use the periodic table at this point. Two times what hydrogen weighs plus one oxygen, we're still going to get 18.016. So mole of water cancels mole of water. So this is going to be 0.195 times 18.016. And our given measurement here, we've got three significant figures. 
So we should round our answer to three significant figures. That would be 3.51. So this would be 3.51 grams of water. And again, the molar mass is exactly that. It's a conversion factor. We can use it grams per one mole or one mole weighs so many grams. And if we just do the science of canceling units, we can convert uh, the mass of any formula to moles or the moles of any formula to grams.